Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy and this is Happiness Created. Today's video is all about rub-on transfers, so let's get going. I got these pieces from Goodwill and I am just, they are from Yankee Candle by the way, um, but I just took some of the white Waverly chalk paint and I painted both pieces with I believe it was two coats. This is when I first started my channel, so I'm sorry if I can't remember everything. So now I'm taking the moss chalk paint and I did some sponging and then took the eucalyptus rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree and I just added the round one in the center. I put a couple on the sides and then I did add some to the shade of this candle holder. And that's it for this one. I think it's super sweet. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, for this next one, I got this box at Goodwill and I think it was a cigar box or a tea box or something, I don't know. I used my mineral chalk paint and I gave it two good coats. Then I took this Stampera paper that I absolutely love. It's in my Amazon storefront down in the description box below. And I added that to the inside of the top of the box and then took these beautiful transfers, which I also got off of Amazon. And I am just adding a bunch of these transfers to the box. Then I'm going to replace all of the hardware and assemble it back together. Then I took some of the Dollar Tree floral foam and I hot glued it into place, um, one on its side and one on the flat side, if that makes sense, so that the back would stand up more. Then I'm taking some of this moss from, I believe I got this big, huge bag at Michael's, and I'm just going to add all around the floral foam. And then I have these gorgeous flowers that I got from Michael's, and I filled the whole box. And here it is. I absolutely love this piece. It is still in my living room to this day. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, for this next one, it has to be one of my favorites, my all-time favorites. I'm taking nine of the five-gallon stir sticks. They come in a three-pack. And then I have some, I think, three of the, you know, the smaller stir sticks. I don't know how big they are. But anyways, I made sure all of the ruler, you know, they have little rulers on the back or on one side. I made sure that they were all in the back. And I put wood glue all over them. And then I put some hot glue on the sticks in the back. And I'm just going to, um, yeah, I ended up clamping them together and waited for the uh, wood glue to dry. Now I have these gorgeous transfers from Amazon, again, down below in my description box. And 
I am just going to, once I picked out the piece that I wanted for this, I'm just cutting everything out, figuring out which way I want it to sit on this, and then I am going to transfer this gorgeous piece onto these stir sticks and I did nothing to the stir sticks I didn't want to stain them or paint them I just wanted them as is and I apologize for my dog apparently a leaf fell <laughs> so now I'm going to take a couple of the smaller pieces and I'm going to add them to the sides of this sign as well. Once I got them transferred, I took the little knife thing that I got from the Dollar Tree. Honestly, these aren't very good. Um, save your money. <laughs> Get something better. But anyway, I just cut off where there were, you know, spaces um, in between the sticks so that the transfer was not uh, visible from the back. And then I just took one of those D hooks, I measured to find the center, and that's it. How gorgeous is this, guys? It was so simple, and I love it. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, for this next one, I have this, I think it's like a charcuterie board or something. I can't even honestly remember where I got it, but that was my first mistake. So I added the antique wax from Waverly, and then I tried to do a rub-on transfer. These are the IOD transfers. They're absolutely amazing. I love them, but you can't put them over <laughs> antique wax. I mean, you can, but it's a bugger, let me tell you. It took me a very long time to get this transferred. I'm not going to make you watch it all, but in the end, it turned out amazing. So, um, yeah, there we go. I saved you from the misery that was transferring that transfer. Once I got that done, I'm taking some of my favorite jute cording from Amazon and I am just going to wrap it around the bottom of this piece. I do it just a couple of times, uh, maybe three times, I guess. Um, <laughs> and then I hot glue it in the back. I'm going to repeat the process at the top and then I am going to make a hanger for this piece. Once I got that done, I just took my uh, paintbrush at that point. I was using the Celery chalk paint from Waverly, and I just did a light dry brushing over it, and I think it came out so pretty. I really, really like it. It's still in my kitchen. Let me know what you guys think of this one. Okay, this next one, I have two birdhouses. I painted one in agave from Waverly and the other in celery from Waverly. Now I have more of this Stampara paper and I'm going to cut strips so that I can um, decoupage them to the sides of the birdhouses. And I'm just painting the edges with the plaster chalk paint on the agave and I use moss on the celery. 
Now, I'm not going to make you watch all of the decoupaging because this isn't about the decoupaging. It's about the rub-on transfers after the fact. I added the lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree to uh, just jazz up the roof a little bit. And now I have all of these adorable little rub-on transfers again from Amazon. And I am just going to start rubbing a bunch of these transfers onto these two birdhouses. Now I have two of these candle holders from the Dollar Tree and I'm using some of that cement all from the Dollar Tree and some hot glue and I am just placing them on the center of those stick holders, candle holders, <laughs> there we go. And that's it. I absolutely love these bird houses. Let me know what you guys think of them. This next one, I have these three nesting boxes I got from Hobby Lobby and I am using the folk art um, Italian sage, I believe it's called. And I painted all three of them in that color. And now I'm taking this rub-on transfer from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to use this transfer on all three of these boxes. Once I got all the transfers on, I glued the boxes together and then I have those um, drawer poles, handles from Hobby Lobby as well. And I used hot glue and E6000 to attach those to the boxes. And now I'm just adding a bunch of greenery and some gorgeous peonies that I got from Michael's. I absolutely love those peonies. They are so worth the money. And if you go when they're having a sale, they're close to nothing to, to, to purchase them. And they're so beautiful. I love them. And I absolutely love how these boxes came out. You got to let me know what you think of these. I purchased a set of round trays from um, Amazon. Um, this I think was the largest. So I took my um, plaster chalk paint and painted the center. And then I used my, I believe it was Nantucket blue. And I did just the like rim of 
this tray and then I used another one of the rub-on transfers. They're in the same set as the one with the stir sticks that I did earlier and I just added that to the center of this tray. Once that's done, I have these wooden, they look like um, spools from um, thread and I painted them the same blue color and I put five of them on the bottom one in the center just to hold the center up if I put anything heavy in here and that's it for this one I absolutely love it let me know what you think now this one is so easy don't blink I have these shell rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree now you see me here rubbing like crazy but look at this you don't even need to rub on this one you just push it down with your fingers and it pulls right up I got this picture from Goodwill I'm sorry but anyways that's all I did for this one I love this one it was so easy and it's so adorable let me know what you think of this one I got this piece from Target. Now, this was a long time ago, guys, and, um, you know, I'll be using up what I purchased, but that's about it. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, this one kind of was a, an oopsie that um, was, I, I was able to fix it. So, I left it in here because I want you guys to see that, you know, we're not all perfect <laughs> by any means. So, I have this uh, transfer from Chocotor and this is a um, oh my goodness what's it called it's ah oh, it's a pen it has the liquid in it it's supposed to like burn into the wood and for the life of me I can't think of the name of the pen but anyway it like smudged I put way too much on it smudged and smeared and it was a mess as you can see here so I'm covering the back with this um crafting paper from the Dollar Tree and then I painted it with uh plaster chalk paint from Waverly and now I have these half beads I got off of Amazon they came in like an assorted pack as you can see to the left there all different sizes and I just outlined the whole piece with these half beads then I am going to take more of the rub-on transfers from that pack and I just add that right to the front of this piece. See, I was able to save it, guys. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, there's the set right there. Oh, I love that set. I just ordered another one, actually. So I'm just replacing the um, jute hanger and I was trying to decide if I was going to put beads on the hanger or not and I, d I don't know I just thought it didn't go because you know I had the half beads but they weren't the same wood color and I don't know I didn't like it so I took them off <laughs> And I just tied a knot back in the twine and there's my hanger. Now I have this ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby. It's gorgeous. I love these two uh, ribbons together and anytime I see them, I buy some. So I have multiple rolls right now. But anyways, so I layered them. I found the center, did the awareness ribbon, scrunched it in the center, and took some twine and tied it in the back. Now, if you've been with me for a hot minute, you know I don't like my jute to show. So I'm dovetailing the ends right now. And then I do go in 
with another piece of the ribbon and I am going to fold it into thirds and then hot glue it around the center which covers the twine that I'm not so fond of. And then I was just trying to decide which side I was going to put the bow on. I opted for this side, hot glued it right where um, I wanted it. And then I kind of like ruffled the tails a little and tacked them into place because I didn't want them covering up that gorgeous floral transfer just fluffing up the bow and that's it for this one I, I, you guys if you get any rub on transfers you've got to get these they're so beautiful I absolutely love them let me know what you think for this next one I have this chalkboard um, decor piece I guess stand uh, from Dollar Tree. So I went around with my Waverly chalk paint and I did the um, frame and then I did the white chalk paste and I painted the chalkboard. Then I have these um, transfers. Oh my good grief. It's so hard today. <laughs> Anyway, I have these rub-on transfers. This one is a birdhouse and then some little birds and nests and just a bunch of cute ones. I got them from Amazon. They'll be in my storefront. And I just added them to this chalkboard. And then I am apparently making a bow, yes, with some of that lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree and then I just made it a little wavy and um, tacked it in place and then I took one of the totally dazzle brooches and placed it down on the bottom with some little leaves and that's it I think it's super adorable let me know what you think Now I have one of these round uh, wood blanks from Michaels. I'm taking my white chalk paint and I am going around where the um, edge is on this blank. And then I go all around the center. And I took the nautical blue from folk art or no nantucket blue from folk art and i did where the like braid part is then i have this gorgeous rub on transfer that i got from amazon i showed you just a little bit ago what the packaging looked like <laughs> i'm a little behind and i'm just going to rub this anchor right onto this wood blank now I have this container with a bunch of um, mini seashells I again got from Amazon and I'm just taking a bunch of them and I'm just making like a little, I don't know, little puddle if you will of them at the bottom of the anchor and then I am taking the, the blue ribbon from earlier and the one with the um, starfishes on them starfishes starfish on them <laughs> and I just made my bow and placed it on the top of this sign and I love this sign anything nautical you guys know me I love them let me know what you think of this one Okay, for this next one, I have these mason jars I got from Woodpecker's Crafts. 
One of them was eight inches, or the two were eight inches. One of them was 10. I painted them with plaster chalk paint and then some of the silver metallic. And don't mind Skylar, she was joining me this day. <laughs> she was my helper. <laughs> so after I painted them, I have some, um, some, words that I cut out using my Cricut. They say good food, good meat, good gosh, let's eat or something like that. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> so I'm adding them to the mason jars and then I, um, oh my good grief. It's been a while. Sorry, guys. So I started putting this jute twine around where the like top of the jar would be underneath the um, the cover. And I realized I didn't make the cover big enough. So I went back with the paint, the silver paint, and I made the top part bigger. Now I'm just taking that, that jute cording and I am going around the mason jar and I'm going to do that to all three of these pieces. Once I finish that, I am taking some of that jute twine, the like natural and tan color, and I am making some small they're not finger bows. I just take my finger and wrap it around a bunch of times, tie it in the center. And I did that with all three of the jars. Now I have this sign I got from Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance. And I am taking my truffle chalk paint and I just went over it a couple times. Then I took the plaster and I was going to just dry brush the sides, but then I went all over everything. So once I am done with the dry brushing, I am going to start placing my, oh, I guess I'm not. So I have this little uh, cutting board that I got from the Target Dollar Spot, again, a long time ago. And I am just painting that with the same um, plaster chalk paint. And then I am going to start placing my mason jars where I want them. And then, um, what am I doing? All right, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're going to place the mason jars <laughs> first of all then i am taking some rub-on transfers from the dollar tree and i am adding them on the mason jars i'm also going to add some to the cutting board and the little rolling pin as well So now I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to place everything. And once I have that figured out, I'm just hot gluing the cutting board and the rolling pin in place. Now, because that space was empty down below, I decided to use some more of the rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree and added them down below. Now, in person, you can see them much better than you can in this video, but they're not like super obvious. So I'm taking more of that twine and I am just making another bow to put over where I added that rub-on transfer. And I think this is so stinking adorable. I loved it then. I still love it. Let me know what you guys think.
Okay, now I have this like paddle that I got from Woodpecker's Crafts and I started out with the truffle chalk paint and I painted the whole thing and then I went over very heavy with the white Waverly chalk paint. I believe it was white Waverly chalk paint. It was either white or plaster. I think it was white. Anyway, so now I have these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree and I am just adding them to this paddle. Once I finished adding all of the transfers, I just took some of my jute cording that I love so much and I made a hanger for the piece. And because I thought something was missing, I decided to take that cording and just wrap it around the handle a couple few times just to I don't know give it a little more interest but here it is i think it's super adorable let me know what you guys think now i have this oh i love this one okay so i got a mailbox from um goodwill i didn't end up using those but i did use this transfer and the other transfer I showed you, and I got this sign on clearance from Hobby Lobby. So I took my finger sander and I just sanded as much of the wording off as I could and then painted it with the white Waverly chalk paint. Then I took this mailbox and I took some E6000 and I glued the two covers together. Um, the one with the little slot and then the cover itself. And then I glued that to this sign. And then when I was, once it dried, I let it sit overnight. Once it dried, um, I came back with some of the white Waverly chalk paint, did a very heavy dry brushing on it. And then I took some of these um, terracotta paints and I went very heavy handed with the red and the brown just because it was going to match the transfers that I was planning on using for this particular piece. Now I have this welcome to the farm transfer and I added that to the very top of this sign. And then I broke into this set that I got from Amazon and I picked out that Farm Fresh sign or piece and I transferred it onto the mailbox itself. Now, when I went to burnish it, which is like rubbing the like plastic piece over it, it came up. It started scratching off. I was so upset. 
So I took my finger sander and I sanded off that portion of the transfer. And of course, some of the paint came with it. So it, I was very upset, but in the end, it looks amazing. So just stick with me for a little bit. So once I fixed the paint, I found this piece of transfer from the same set. And I think it says organic produce or something along those lines. I can't see because of my re my uh, editing software. But anyway, um, and then I just took my paintbrush and did very, very light dry brushing on the board because I just felt like it was too white. Then I have these cotton, cotton pods um, from one of the uh, transfers and I used those as well. And then I got these flowers. They were in one of those Michael's mystery boxes. Um, I think I got a couple years ago, but um, I just added those to the inside of the mailbox. I Oh, guys, I just absolutely love this piece. I, I, I may be a little biased, I know, but... I just love this piece. Okay, so because I added those cotton pods, the transfers, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to use the ones from the Dollar Tree, and I do. So I add them to the side of the mailbox. And once I get them on both sides, that's it how gorgeous is this piece guys i don't know is it just me am i biased i love 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 this piece let me know what you guys think so this next piece is one of those i think it's like a letter holder or mail holder i got it from one of our local thrift stores and I am going to remake it. So I painted the front with whatever I just showed you. I don't know if it was white or plaster. And then I have this bag. It's like a burlap bag, but it's got like a plastic on the inside. It's from Dollar Tree. So I just cut a piece out to cover where I painted. And um, yeah, so... I am just adding some E6000 and I'm going to place that on. And then when it's dry, I go back with my finger sander and take all of the excess. So now I have these rub-on transfers and I'm trying to decide what I'm going to use. I opted for this home sweet home and then I was trying to figure out where I was going to put it. So I opted to put it on top of the burlap piece and I'm glad I did. I think it worked out good. So I'm just taking some um, antique wax from Waverly and I'm just going around the burlap part to kind of dirty it up just a smidge now i'm going to take one of the handles from that same bag and i am just going to add that to the top as a hanger for this piece And then I took the other um, handle and I made a little bow with, with that piece. 
and I'm just going to uh, add that to the top of this little hanger. And I think that's all I did, yeah. So you can use it for your mail or you could put some flowers in it or like a notepad and pen, like right there. So, I mean, there are plenty of options. But let me know what you think of this one. Okay, so I have these Corbels. I think they're called Corbels, Corbels. And I got them from my local thrift store. I painted them in the Nantucket blue and did a dry brushing with my white Waverly chalk paint. Then I used these beautiful blue flowers from Dollar Tree and I just added them. Now it's very subtle because it's pretty close to the same color as the paint, but when you're up close and personal, you can definitely, definitely see the transfers. And here's how they turned out. I love these pieces. Let me know what you guys think. All right, now I have these two signs from the Dollar Tree and two of the, um, well, f all right, let's slow it down, girl. All right, so I'm taking my <laughs> chippy brush from the Dollar Tree with some white chalk paint and did a very uh, heavy dry brushing. I had four of the um, palettes. No, I'm sorry. There were two of the palette signs and I am just going to hot glue them to the back of these signs from Dollar Tree and I'm making a crate. So I took some of the uh, foam board that I had just in my stash and I made the base with that and then I did paint it with the same rich black from folk art that I used on the um <sighs> the palette signs and I added some rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree and that's it for this one I think it's super adorable let me know what you think Okay, now I have three of the bamboo cutting boards from Dollar Tree and these gorgeous IOD stamps I got from my Victorian heart. Her uh, website link is always in my description box. I love her products, customer service. She's a sweetheart. It's a, it's a total package. So I took these bamboo cutting boards and I dry brushed them with white chalk paint. And then I am taking the stamps and first you have to sand them down like the first time you use them. And then with a, with a light sanding, like you don't want to like take an orbital sander to them or anything, but anyway. <laughs> So now I'm taking some of my ink and I am going to put it on the stamp and then I am going to stamp one of these animals on each of the cutting boards.
And guys, the details on these stamps are amazing. So now I have these two planks from Dollar Tree and I am just painting them white. And then I am going to use some wood glue and some hot glue and I'm going to attach them side by side. And then I'm going to take some of the large um, craft sticks I get from Walmart, I believe. And I am just going to add them with some wood glue and some hot glue to the back to hold these pieces together. Then I take my cutting boards and I am going to add all three of them to the front of these two planks. Once that's done, I'm taking my jute cording and I am going all around the outside of this picture and or sign and then I take some pieces and go where the cutting boards meet like horizontally. I then take some of the farmhouse rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree and I am just going to add them all over this adorable little sign. I finish it off with a very simple shoestring bow that I add to the top center of the sign. And that's it for this one. I think it's super adorable. Look at all the detail in those stamps, guys. They truly are amazing and worth the money. Let me know what you guys think of this one. Oh, this next one. Oh, ho, ho. so I got this sign um, at Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance and these um, mason jars from Woodpecker's Crafts. I painted them white and then I did the silver top. I love this sign so much. So I have this Chalk Couture transfer and I'm no longer a designer, but I do know some. If you're interested, let me know and I will get you in touch with them. So I just used my black velvet chalk paste and I did use the transfer that says Homestead. Now, I am taking the silver um, paint and I am going over the top part of these jars to make it look like the cover. <laughs> now I have these gorgeous transfers from Amazon and I am going to add three of them, one to each of the jars.
Once I get the transfers on, I am just going to take some more of that cording and I am going to go around the top part of the sign. Uh, the, the mason jars, not the sign. <laughs> Now I decided I wanted the jars to stand up a little bit off of the sign. So I added a couple tumbling tower blocks to the back of the two larger um, jars. And then for the smaller one, I added uh, two, I added four tumbling tower blocks to the back of that one so that it would stand up a little bit further and kind of sit over there. You can see they're over, it's over the two on the side, if that makes any sense at all. Um, now I'm just taking some of whatever was on that paintbrush, I believe it was the antique wax, and I just went over everything to kind of dirty it up a little bit because it was a little bit too stark white. Then I'm just making a simple shoestring bow for the three jars and burning off the fuzzies. I love doing that. I was scared at first, but now I love doing that. But anyways, here it is. Look at how gorgeous this is. Oh my goodness gracious. I absolutely love this one. <laughs> I know I've been saying that to all of them, but I really do love this one. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, as far as farmhouse decor goes, this is my favorite hands down. So I have this um, like palette sign from Hobby Lobby and that's Nico, he was my assistant. And I am just going to take some white chalk paint and do a very heavy dry brushing over this whole entire sign. Once I'm done with that, I have this beautiful transfer look at this you guys look at it it's gorgeous okay so i am going to add the barn to this beautiful sign oh my word i love this i can't say it enough okay i'm gonna stop so i don't drive you guys crazy at least too too much so once I am done adding the barn to this sign, I'm not gonna make you watch the entire process <laughs> because that's crazy. So I made you watch this side, but I don't believe I make you watch the other side. But we'll see in just a second, won't we? We're gonna watch this together, guys. <laughs> So I took off whatever was hanging on the side because I didn't want it to wrap around the side of the um, picture. So yeah, here it is. Look at that. <gasps> oh, I love, love, love this. So now I have learned that this is called a weather vane. So I put that on the top of the barn. I know it's a little big, but it's still beautiful. And then I have the red truck that I add to. I just, oh my goodness. Every time I see this one, it just blows my mind. So I added this little piece to the bottom. And then I was trying to figure out what ribbon I was going to use for the top because I just wanted to add a little something over on the left corner. So I took some of the red and black and white and black uh, checked ribbon 
and I made a bow with that. I did the awareness ribbon, scrunched it in the center, tied it in the back, and then I dovetailed the ends and then took a piece of one of the ribbons. I don't remember if I used the white and black or the red and black. Um, I used the white and black because of course that's gonna show up more. So I fold it into thirds and then I'm going to wrap it around the center of the bow to cover the twine. And then I hot glue it over in the corner and just tack the tails down so that they don't cover that gorgeous barn. And you can see that I try to like ruffle it up a little bit. Um, but guys, tell me this is not one of the most beautiful pieces that you have seen me do. I am super in love with this. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Now I have this wood blank I got from Michaels and here is that beautiful rub-on transfer that I got from Amazon. So I'm using my, uh, is that celery? I believe it's moss actually. And then I dry brush it with celery. And then I take this rub-on transfer and I am going to add that to the center of this sign. Once I have all the transfers on, I take some of that jute twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just making a little bow to stick on the side and I just bring the tail right over. And that's it. It's so simple, but I absolutely love it. Let me know what you think of this one. Okay, here's another wood blank from Michaels. I used my white chalk paint and then I dry brushed it with the black chalk paint. And now I'm adding this chicken coop and some chickens to this sign. I got this black and white ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to make a bow for the top. I made the tails long so that I could run them across the top of the sign. And I think that's pretty much all I did for this one. <laughs> And that's it 
for this one. I think it's super, super adorable. Let me know what you guys think of this one. So for this next one, I lost some of the footage. So I'm showing you here. This is the wood blank that I got from Michaels. I painted it, used this transfer. I painted it with some white chalk paint and then went over it with black. I replaced the hanger with some of the faux leather from Dollar Tree and the rub-on transfers that I showed you earlier and that's it for this one actually i did use some of the dollar tree uh farmhouse transfers as well but i think this came out super super cute let me know what you guys think So I got this tin piece from one of our local thrift stores, and then I just had a spare piece of wood hanging around. I painted it all with that sage, and now I am trying to find some of the half beads, which I am going to use to make a border on this sign. Now I'm taking the beads and putting them on um, a piece of painter's tape, and then I am going to paint them with the Waverly plaster chalk paint. Once they're dry, I am going to start hot gluing them onto the border of this piece of wood. Once I have that done, I'm taking some of the white wax from um, home decor, I believe it is, a faux guard home decor. Uh, and I probably should have waited on the wax and you'll see why later. But now I'm taking this rub on transfer and I am going to add it to this metal hanger bucket thing. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> But anyways, once I got the transfer on, I took the white wax and I went over this metal piece as well. Then I am going to take some of these branches that came off of one of these transfers. They had a bunch of like birds and bird houses and stuff. Um, again, from Amazon. So I am adding the branches to this piece of wood as well before I um, adhere this metal hanger piece. So now I'm taking some E6000 and I am going to use that. And I believe I used some hot glue just for yeah for like the immediate hold and then the uh, e6000 will hold it permanently and then these are my favorite flowers from dollar tree i just added those right inside and how gorgeous did this sign come out guys let me know what you think Okay, time for a commercial break. <laughs> so I wanted to let you all know I am on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. I also have a buy me a coffee link if you would like to support my channel monetarily, which you do not have to do. Watching the ads for my videos helps me so much. Either way, 
please stop by my social media and say hi. I would love to hear from all of you. Okay, for this next one, I have those plank pieces um, from the Dollar Tree and these, um, what are they, like pallet signs, I guess. So I am going to put four of them together and I am making another crate. Um, so I'm going to use these planks for the bottom of the crate that I'm making. So I measured it out and now I'm just going to take my utility knife. I'm going to score through a couple of times and then I end up taking my miter shears and going through the rest. Now I'm going to take some wood glue and some hot glue and I am going to attach these planks to the bottom of my crate. Once that's all together, I'm gonna take my white Waverly chalk paint. I am painting one of these square planks from the Dollar Tree. Um, they come in a pack of like five or six and I painted the outside of my crate as well. Then I took one of these rub-on transfers and I added it to the front of this square plank. And then I am going to glue that right to the front of my crate that I made. Then I take a chippy brush and some of my rich black paint from Folk Art. And I am going around the edge of the plank in the front and then I decide I'm going to do all of the edges and yes those are real eggs because I didn't have anything else to stage it with <laughs> so but I love this little crate I think it's super adorable let me know what you guys think of this one Now I was able to find two of these cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. I painted them both with white chalk paint and then used two of the rub-on transfers that I had. And once I added the transfers, I took a ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I believe it was the um black and white buffalo check and i wrapped it around the handle and i also used some of the rich black chalk paint to go over the edges and just a little bit in the center and i think these are super adorable let me know what you think now i have this lazy susan i got from my local thrift store I painted it with the moss chalk paint and went over it two times, I believe. And then I took another one of these eucalyptus transfers. I have a little bit of an addiction to these. Anyway, I added that to the center of this Lazy Susan. Once I got that all done, I am taking some of the white wax and I just went over the entire thing to kind of seal everything in. And also because I wanted to kind of lighten up the color that I put on it. But that's it. I think it's so gorgeous. Still on my island right now. Love it, love it, love it. Let me know what you think. Okay, so I have this um, wood blank from Michaels. I used mineral chalk paint and white, and then I used the welcome word. I painted that in white and hot glued it into place. And now I have these IOD transfers. I am in love with these. They're like a woodland 
theme. And I made these for my niece and goddaughter. And I am just, oh, now I'm gluing it into place. Sorry, I thought I already did. So I'm going to take out some of the uh, rub-on transfers and I'm going to add them to this sign. Once I was done with the transfer, I have some of these birds that I used my casting resin to create and they're gorgeous i love them and i took some of the rub and buff and i um just put it on this little bird and then i added it to the top of the sign and i think this is so beautiful i absolutely love it and so does she let me know what you guys think Now I have another one of the wood blanks from Michaels and man, that just went really fast. So I used antique wax and then some white wax, I mean some white chalk paint to go over it. And now I have this rub on transfer as part of that woodland. And I just added what I thought would look really, really sweet on here. And then I have more of those um, resin pieces and I used all of those colors, um, oh, good grief, pink sky. Um, what else did I use? Um, agave. And I ended up putting white wax on all of them. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, those colors just went way too quick for me. Uh, I think that one is dusk and that one is pink sky. But anyways, I added a hanger to the back of this sign so that she could hang it up in her house she just got a new house and that's it i love these so much i think i might buy another pack of those transfers so that i can make myself one of these signs and the last sign let me know what you guys think of this one Okay, now I have these rolling pins I got from Hobby Lobby. They were on clearance. I paid like 90 cents for them. I have one of the trays from Woodpecker's Crafts and a rub-on transfer. So I'm taking my rich black and white Waverly chalk paint and I went over the rolling pins and the tray. Now I'm taking the rolling pins and I'm hot gluing them where the handles of the tray are. Then I take this rub on transfer and I add it to the center of this tray and it's a gorgeous horse. Now I'm taking one of those fan brushes and I'm just tapping it along the side of my tray to give it little like speckles of paint. And then I go ahead and dry brush a little bit. And that's it for this one. It was so simple, but I absolutely love it. Let me know what you guys think of this one. Okay, now I have this wood blank that came from Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance for 90% off. And this little shadow box came from Woodpecker's Crafts. I painted it white and then used the black for the edge. 
Now I have a cow that I made with the casting resin and my IOD um, mold. And I have some black rub and buff. So I put that on the cow and now I'm just kind of wiping it back off. So kind of wax on, wax off kind of deal. And then I have some of the um, Spanish clapper, I believe it's called, and um, antique gold. And I use those for these wheat bunches. Um, I did it with both of them. And they came out so gorgeous. <laughs> so just you wait and see. So I am adding some wood glue and some hot glue and I'm going to glue the cow to the inside of that shadow box and then I'm going to use wood glue and hot glue and I am going to add the shadow box to the sign. Now I add just with some hot glue the wheat bunches to the sides of the shadow box. Then I'm going to use some more of those farmhouse um, rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. And I just used this welcome and I used the back of my Cricut pick thing to rub it on. And then I used some of the leaves that were also on that transfer to add to my little sign here. And that's it for this one. How stinking cute is that cow? Truly. Like, I love him so, so much. Let me know what you think. Okay, now I have two of these signs I got from Hobby Lobby. They were on clearance. I think I paid like a dollar or something for them, whatever. It was 90% off, whatever that tag was. So anyway, I'm taking the hangers off. They were on like little screws, those eye hooks. So I just unscrewed them. That's it. It was very, very simple. <laughs> so now I have my new staple gun and I'm using that to staple these two boards together. I didn't think ahead, so I didn't put the wood glue in. So yeah, I'm a little, you know, just call me backwards, Tammy. But anyway, <laughs> um, once I had the glue in place I put the clamps on and just let it sit then I painted it white now I have this sticker from uh, Timu now I know this is a rub on transfer video just just bear with me okay I promise they're coming so I'm taking this it's one of those wall decals, but I used it on the sign and I love it. I think it came out really, really cute. So um, the good thing with the stickers as opposed to the rub on transfers is that you can move them. So anyways, I am adding all of these pieces and then I have this um, cutting board and the rolling pin both came from Hobby Lobby as well. So I am just taking the white paint and I am painting the front of this cutting board. And I think I do the sides too, if I remember correctly. Uh, nope, I do the sides in black. And then I do some like dry brushing on the edge of the cutting board. So you can see on the cutting board, I had the little sticker, you know, that shows you how it's supposed to look on there, but I kind of thought that was a little redundant. So I am 
taking some of the rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree and I am going to add them to the cutting board. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to hot glue the cutting board and the rolling pin to the sign. Now I'm just measuring out where I am going to put those eye hooks. I just decided I was going to use those. <laughs> Why not, right? I already have them. I might as well use them. So I screwed those into the top and then I'm taking some craft paper to cover the ugly in the back. Not that it's ugly. I mean, it says God bless America. There's nothing ugly about that, but um, it doesn't really go with the um, kitchen decor on the front. So I covered it. And then I'm just taking a piece of my jute cording that I love so much and I hot glued it as well to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And that's it for this one. See, I told you there were going to be some Robon transfers, but I absolutely love this. I can't wait to hang it in the kitchen. Let me know what you guys think of this one. Okay, now I have one of those long um, frames from the Dollar Tree. I had four of them. They were all broke in the same corner. I don't know what happened. Um, so I was able to hot glue it back together. So now I'm taking it all apart and I am going to use my agave paint and I am going over the entire thing and then I dry brush it with some white and then I take my sander and scratch off a little bit so the black is showing. Now I have this gorgeous transfer from Amazon and I cut out the lighthouse and I'm just placing it right in the center of this glass piece. Now when you're rubbing on glass, just be careful because you will break it. <laughs> ask me how I know <laughs> so anyways I um added that on to the front and then I flipped it over and I am taking some white Waverly chalk paint um the Nant Nantucket blue from folk art um that I believe is the agave um, and that's dusk, I believe. And then I use some more white on the top. And I believe I use some white on the bottom as well. <laughs> oh, and there was some ocean. That's right. Now I'm taking some uh, contact paper that I got at Walmart. And it's just white. And I just covered the backing of the picture frame and now I'm just trimming off the excess and then I put the picture frame back together with the backing and that oh I ended up going over the back of the picture frame as well with the agave and that's it for this one I absolutely love this piece and I actually had a subscriber recreate this piece and I am going to be adding it in a future video so let me know what you think of that one now I have these four by six frames. They come, they like the glass slides out and there's two pieces of glass and you sandwich the paper or the picture in between. I'm not gonna do that. Um, but I do take the glass and I am covering the glass with the same white contact paper. And then I am taking some of these what are they They're like nautical stars I guess compasses anyway I um, do one on each side now one of these I end up cracking yep you heard me right that's how I know <laughs> that you can crack it so you got to be careful 
So anyway, I think they came out super, super cute. I did end up buying another glass and I used another transfer and, but you can see right there that one, yeah, that one broke, but I was able to get another one and fix it. Let me know what you think of these minus the crack. So now I have these frames and I painted the frames with the um, nautical, no, why do I keep saying that? The Nantucket Blue from Folk Art. And then I am cutting out some of these transfers that I am going to use on the glass pieces. So I figure out how I'm going to add them and then I add them. <laughs> Oh my good gracious I I worry about myself sometimes but anyway I used two of the coral pieces and then I sandwiched the um, transfer with the other glass piece and I'm going to repeat the process with this one and that's all I did for these they're so pretty. I think they came out so pretty. I, I mean, uh, again, I'm biased, but I think they came out really, really pretty. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> okay, now I have this picture. It used to hang up in our old living room and yeah, I was done with it. So I painted the frame with that Nantucket blue and now I have a bunch of sea glass that I got from um, Dollar Tree it's like frosted sea glass really really pretty um, I think it was part of the shoreline but I'm not positive I did find it in the floral section so I'm just gonna go around with the um, sea glass and the E6000 and I'm just going to put a bunch of them just kind of randomly I didn't make like a circle or anything I just kind of made like a random pattern and I'm not going to make you watch all of it I just wanted to show you some of it <laughs> Then I took a piece of one of the transfers and I put that in the center of my little design here. And now I have those glass beads and I was just going to put them randomly around and I did, but I was going to do them in a single spot singularly <laughs> I ended up making groups of three with the three different colors the blue the like greenish color and the clear and that's it I added it back into the frame I used e6000 because I didn't put a backing on it and I think this is absolutely gorgeous I love it so so much let me know what you think of this one. I hope you enjoyed this mega rub-on transfer video. If you did, go ahead and give it a great big thumbs up for me. It really helps me out with YouTube. It lets them know that you enjoy my content and will push it out for others to enjoy as well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you'll consider sticking around and hit that subscribe button and don't forget the bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a brand new video. I thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me and I will see you next time.